A hybrid is a great first step. But if we're really serious about cutting our dependence on oil, we need to do more. And the biggest single step that we can take to cutting our dependence on oil is making our cars, our trucks, and our SUVs go further on a gallon of gas. Yeah, Ron, do you think at some point this, the, the tax incentives should be normalized uh, relative to each other? I mean, if indeed a 6,000-pound SUV gets you a much bigger, not only tax break, but depreciation schedule for a small business owner who will ride it for some years, do you think that should be evened out somewhere along the line? Well, evened out, but in this sense, in that motor vehicles, for some reason, are discriminated against under the U.S. tax code, and they have been so for years. And, are we going to need a constitutional amendment to fix that, uh, I don't think so, but we, we should look at why is it that motor vehicles have for many years been treated differently than any other type of business asset like a forklift or a conference table. Right now, any vehicle, regardless of the weight of that vehicle, has limits on how much a small business owner can deduct in the first year, and that's ridiculous. That's a, a tool, a motor vehicle is a tool, just like a forklift or anything else in a small business. Brendan, do you, do you agree or disagree with that assertion? Well, I think it doesn't make sense if we're addicted to oil to be encouraging small businesses to buy the biggest gas guzzlers on the road. That's just going for another fix. But if you have to haul materials or, or people or whatever and, and you have a small business, you can't exactly buy a small car and, yeah. and be an efficient operation. I, I would like to ask, ask Brendan if he would like to be the salesperson to go out to small businesses, uh, to the, the florists, uh, the people that do landscaping construction and try and convince them that Big Brother would really rather that they do their business in a Honda hybrid. I don't think he's going to get many takers. Well, I'd actually, Ron, like to be the salesman for hybrids because there's a six-month waiting list on them and they're making good money. I think we can provide the kind of vehicles that Americans want to drive, including work vehicles. But what we're talking about here is real estate agents, doctors, lawyers driving Hummers. And to make a house call, you don't need a Hummer. Well, that's what we a red... do need to do is we need to cut our dependence on oil, and we have uh, the technology to do that. That's what? a red herring that the Sierra Club's thrown out for a long time. There's very few doctors and lawyers that can legitimately deduct any vehicle unless there, there's still country doctors out there that are using well, Ron, their, their Ron, vehicle. Ron, what are the prohibitions then on dedu making deductions and using a, a more generous depreciation schedule? Well, current, for an currently, uh, uh, any vehicle under six thousand pounds you can only deduct up to fifteen thousand dollars and that's discrimination because the average car today costs well over that and the, the vehicles above six thousand the limit is twenty five thousand why should there be uh, any different treatment on motor vehicles than there are for a conference table all right Brennan I'll give you the last word well what we're talking about here is a tax break for vehicles over six thousand pounds that we don't need to be encouraging people to drive we need to be devoting ourselves to cutting our dependence on oil all right gentlemen I'll leave it there Brendan Bell Ronda four thanks for being with thank us you. thank you